Okay, so in this video, we will present a rigorous proof of the limit comparison test. And as you will see, this is simply to verify that our intuition from the previous video is actually correct. And if you recall, the intuition was simply that if a n over b n as n goes to infinity approaches k, then when n is large, a n is roughly k times b n. So a n is roughly a multiple of b n, so the series of a n will be roughly a multiple of the series of b n. So they will be of the same order of magnitude. So either both series are finite, hence both converge, or both series are infinite, hence both diverge, as we have in both cases series of positive terms. So they can only either be finite or infinite. So here's the proof now. What are we saying? As n gets larger and larger and larger, a n over b n converges to k. This means that if we take n to be large enough, we can make a n over b n as close as we want to k, where k is some positive real number. So let's look at this onto the real line. So we have 0. k is some positive real number. And again, if n is large enough, a n over b n is as close as we want to k. So let's construct a small interval around k. We'll take the left-hand point to be a half of k. If k is positive, so is a half of k. This will be k over 2. And we'll go up to another half of k further. So k plus a half k is 3 over 2 times k. So now we have a small interval around k where both endpoints are positive. And as we can make a n over b n as close as we want to k, then there has to be a point where n is big enough where a n over b n is inside of our small interval around the value of k. So a n over b n must be in here if n is large enough. Well, how large we don't know, but there has to be a point where when n exceeds this point, every value of a n over b n from that point on is close enough to k, so is inside of our little interval. We don't know what that large enough value is, so say it is, say, uppercase n. So this could be 10, it could be a million, it could be a billion, we don't know. But if n is big enough, so think of uppercase n as a very large positive integer, so if n is big enough, then a n over b n will be close enough to k, therefore it will lie inside of our small interval. And now as we'll see, this is the crux of the argument. We're essentially done now. So let's rewrite this statement in terms of inequalities. So if a n over b n lies inside the interval, then k over 2 is at most a n over b n, which in turn is at most 3 over 2 times k. And this is of course only if n is at least as large as uppercase n. Well, as bn is assumed to be strictly positive, we can multiply across by bn, and this will preserve both inequalities. So we'll have k over 2 times bn is at most a n, which is at most in turn 3 over 2k times bn. Again, only if n is large enough, so larger or equal to uppercase n. And now you know what's coming, right? Every term here is less than every term here. Every term here is less than every term here, as long as n is larger than or equal to uppercase n. So we can now sum all three expressions. If the terms here are less than the terms here, and summing up the smaller terms, 
will be smaller than summing up the larger terms. But of course, we are subbing not from 1, but from uppercase n to infinity. And the same is true here. If these terms are less than these terms, then summing up the smaller terms will be smaller than summing up the larger terms. And again, as the inequality is only valid if n is bigger than or equal to uppercase n, we have to start summing at uppercase n. And now we'll do one other thing. We'll factor out k over 2 from this sum, as k over 2 is a constant with respect to n. And we'll factor out 3 over 2 times k out of the sum, as again, this is a constant with respect to n. And if you look, what's interesting is that we have bounded the series of a n from uppercase n to infinity between a multiple of the series of b n and another multiple of the series of b n. And now we're essentially there. Right? As a n and b n are always positive, we have here a series of positive terms. So as we sum more and more positive terms, the sum gets larger and larger and larger, and we know there are only two possibilities. The sum is either finite or infinite. So let's see what happens to the series of an in either case. If the series of bn is finite, well, as k is a real number, 3 over 2 times k times a real number is also a real number. This is finite. But then our series of an is less than this real number. So the series of an is also finite, and so you see, if the series of bn is finite, so is the series of an, therefore they both converge from this inequality. What if now we look at the other possibility for the series of bn? If it's not finite, it has to be infinite, but if this series is infinite, k over 2 is a positive multiple, so k over 2 times infinity is also infinity, but then the series of a n is at least as big as infinity, so it must be infinite. And so you see, if the series of b n is infinite, so is the series of a n. And now we have almost our desired conclusion. We have proved with this inequality that if the series of b n is finite, the series of a n is also finite, so both series converge. If the series of b n is infinite, because of this inequality, the series of a n is also infinite, so both series diverge. And so you see, whatever happens to this series, the same conclusion applies to this series. If this series converges, this series converges. If this series diverges, this series diverges. So what do we have now? That the series from uppercase n to infinity of a n converges, if and only if the series from uppercase n to infinity of bn converges. The only problem, if you look back, this is the conclusion that we were after. The only problem is that what we have is both series beginning at 1 and not at some large integer. This is an easy fix. We have used this many times in the past. When we deal with convergence, not trying to evaluate, if possible, a convergence series, only convergence, determine if the series converges or diverges, we can always ignore the first few terms. So here we have ignored the terms from 1 to n minus 1. So in both cases, we've ignored the first few terms. That is nothing but a finite sum, so it does not affect convergence. So whatever must be true about these two series beginning at uppercase n must also be true about the two series beginning at 1. 
as again we can always ignore the first three terms when we try and determine convergence of a series. And we have now the desired conclusion. Which proves that indeed our intuition from the previous video was correct. And you should really simply recall the intuition when n is large, a n over b n is roughly k, so a n is roughly just a multiple of b n. So this series of a n will roughly be some positive multiple of the series of b n. So both series are roughly of the same order of magnitude. So either they are both finite, hence both converge, or they are both infinite, hence both diverge, as again we have series of positive terms. And that's it.